Hi there, and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire on the maximum level. We're looking for the Brood Mother here. The Hohena Ravine. We're kind of exhausted, but we'll see if we can still find and defeat her. And where she. <gasps> And we, actually, we don't want to, we don't want to fight in any case. If there's a possibility of negotiation, we're definitely on the side of the wild suppressed creatures. A large lagufath, a brood mother by her size and crest, surfaces from the pool. Around her neck hangs a knotted cord, strung with shiny odds and ends. She chirrups softly. As you draw closer, she gurgles in agitation. But she does not attack. She's better than most humans. She dives back down and disappears. You hear splashing and chattering coming from further up the slope. And, uh, oh, okay. Strangely, she didn't attack me. Can we talk to her somehow? Maybe if we free her children, maybe that would be something. <gasps> There's the brood mother. Now, can we talk to her? Cocking her head, the brood mother watches you and lets out an inquisitive chirrup. We'll. What would we need here? A ranger or a chanter? We'll cheer up at her. Good mother stops gurgling and takes a tentative step closer, craning her neck with interest. Other lagufath peer and cheer up at you. A young lagufath pokes its head out from behind one of the adults and burbles happily. The adult ushers it back with a firm claw. It looks smaller than the hatchlings in the cage, but not by much. Oh, Anna. Observing the exchange, the brood mother looks to you and lets out a plaintive cry. Huana, she says, okay. Huana. It looks like, it sounds like she's trying to say Huana. Ah. Huana. Snarls and gurgles rise in volume. The other Lagafath like bare their teeth at the name. Huana. The brood mother hisses. Her attending warriors brandish spears, clubs, and blowguns. Okay, um, you hate the Oana. Hatchlings. She screeches, not at you it seems, but at what you said, hatchlings. Yeah, she wants the hatchlings back, of course. You already wanted to free them. Many claws tighten about weapons and tails, leashing an eager hypnotic rhythm. The broodmother watches you. Yes, I saw your hatchlings caged in the village. She screeches with emotion, rocking her whole body back and forth. Her bristling fin flashes like a blade. The other lagufath bare their teeth even wider. Turning her attention from you to the formation of lagufath, the broodmother hisses and flicks her tail, gesturing down toward the bottom of the ravine, toward the village. The others bob their heads in agreement. Oh, Anna. She turns back to you and growls, Huana. I can rescue you, hatchlings, but your clan must stay away from the village. The broodmother chitters and blinks at you, tilting her head this way and that. At last, she raises her head and trills through the treetops. One by one, the other Lagafath lower their weapons and snap their jaws shut. Please, hatchlings. As she turns her fish eyes on you. Yeah, that's totally our thing. To do that. That is a diplomacy that lets her live. I mean, we cannot really attack the, the Juana village, right? <laughs> that would be a little bit, a step too much, even for us. But uh, freeing the hatchlings, that's totally our thing. 
the brood mother can talk to us and what's down here is there another <gasps> oh my god what is that an assassin vine Maybe we'll first free the hatchlings and then we'll go back here and come back a little stronger and then defeat the assassin vine. So let's make that way. Let's go back out. There's also something here. Can we even access this? I don't think so. So let's go back here step by step we already talked about this we wanted to free them already but now we have definitely a big incentive to do though to do so so from the hohina ravine we travel to tikawara and we could do that that maybe a little bit faster there we go daily wages let's get back to it um, yeah to Tikawara and it's 64 inhabitants we should free them Now the way is um, maybe we can talk this out. So we should talk to the chieftain maybe. Let's see. Maybe he can let them open that thing. That will be the diplomatic way, so let's try that. Hey there, you need? You Ranga. Ask. I had Wind questions. Okay. On, He's not concerned about that, okay. Then we'll go to the beach and speak directly to the cage master. Hmm. Or maybe to him we he. Well, did you just appear here? Him we he is here. She's a trader and no, not really a trader. She's definitely not a trader. She's the overseer here. For what do you linger here? The village is much too quiet. Arista's hands fidget with her weapon while her slitted eyes scan the horizon. You know what? We need to release the Lagofarth hatchlings. She throws back her head and laughs. <laughs> but you do not laugh. Then you do not joke. For what would I do this foolish thing? She wipes a tear of merriment from the corner of her eye. Yeah, we would do diplomacy if we can. They have clans and families. What would you do if someone caged your children? Expression hardens. Then I never forgive them. We must destroy the broodmother now before she is bolder. She brushes another speck of moisture from her eye. Um, For what do you say this again? Okay. For what do we say this again? She raises an eyebrow, but she's listening. You want them to leave you alone, right? Release their young and they will. They are animals. They hunt where they smell food, and they smell food in our village. She leans forward and speaks slowly, as though explaining this to a child. If I release the young ones, then they attack when they grow big. Oh, we know that from our survival. Nice. Lagofath are reclusive by nature. They would avoid the village if they you did not have their young. When they ran from me before. I thought it was only my weapon they feared. She laughs again but tapers off into a pensive silence. But suppose you are right. Then I do not have to suffer their stench. 
She rubs her chin. Take the key then, and yell for help if anything goes wrong. She passes you the key with one hand and hefts her weapon in the other. All right, she can be convinced. That's new. So let's do the deed. Let's release the cute little ones. The good Lagufath. In rain, the weather they love. I'll see it done. You can go, hatchlings. Chirp! Look out. They escape. Chirp! And they, there they are. Leaping from the water, the broodmother eagerly chirrups and beckons toward her hatchlings. They rally around her with unbridled joy. And now they attack the village. No! She lets out a low-pitched warble when she sees you. The broodmother makes a show of removing her necklace and laying it out on the sand, then gesturing from you to the necklace and back again. Chirruping and waving her chest, the broodmother and her hatchlings dive back into the ocean. Okay, so we don't have to go back. <laughs> but we will. There's an interesting fight happening, probably. Ah, a necklace. What's that necklace, then? Oh, we have to look at the beach, probably. Let's go. And there it lies in the sand. Leave it to me. Baubles of the fin. What is that? Glittering grim crack. One constitution, one intellect. Grants cruelty and curios. 3% more damage. The collection of trinkets, witnesses of countless acts of mischief and malice, radiate their cruel temperament and aura that boosts outgoing damage of all allies within range. Oh, 5 meters range. Woo, that's good. This necklace is an eclectic collection of detritus, trinkets, and ornaments that caught the eye of its broodmother owner. These glittering prizes act as a banner and beacon to lesser Lagufath, inspiring them to unlikely bravery. Though there is likely no magic in this humble device, it does seem to resonate with the broodmother's avarice and dominance. Who could wear this? I mean, Kevava would be a good choice. Darkest before dawn, yeah. Hmm. That's still good. You have the token of faith, which is good. Stone of power. The dragon pendant. Dragon pendant is so good. The wise teeth necklace is also very good. One constitution, one intellect. What does the power surge do? Plus one all power levels. I mean, that's also good, right? One intellect, one history, one insight. Hmm. I don't know, two resolve are just too good for him. One constitution is also good though. Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's let's try this out for for Adonan. He's still good at the defense, at the will defense. So it's nice, it's nice. You get something from the intellect and constitution is also not too bad. And we'll have more damage, so that's... Suits me, don't you think? That's a good choice. Now, um, there's one thing left to do. Uh, leave this place and go back. That's what we'll do now.
Oh, we have to tell him him we he first though. And then we'll go back to the ravine and It seems the lag of fast no longer bother us. I can save my strength for a worthy fight. She nods cautiously. Very good, farewell. Yeah, we'll go back there because there's still something lingering around that we've seen. Oh, 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 Tamau is free now. Let's talk to him again. Stretching to crack his spine, Tamau favors you with a tired, disinterested glance. I hope you do not come for thanks. My gratitude pouch is as empty as my belly, I say. We could slap him. <laughs> that would be positive. And aggressive. So you're not even a little thankful. For what? Because I am no longer accused? I say you set a low bar. He snorts derisively and focuses his, his attention elsewhere. I had some Less questions. Around here who would answer better than me. I never learned much except how to find food. Alright. What say? I labor for, for what does We'll not slap him. That's not our style. He's a fool. That's a bully style, I mean. We're only bullies for the strong, not for the weak. Oh, we're starting to become that. That's our motivation. Let's get back to the ravine. And then try that fight. Mm, but we'll not do that fight in this episode. We'll do it in the next one. It's too long for me right now. I have to rest too sometimes. Like you would, maybe. There is a grove. And it's at night. Lagforth Hatchling chirps excitedly when it sees you. Its bulbous eyes widen even further. Yeah, next time, a fight down here against a Delum gun and its and its minions. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan signing out.